It's a bit ironic. One of the few times I actually took notes and was going to go on a point-by-point -point basis. And uh, I left my notepad at the trade fair yesterday. And so uh, here I'll be uh, gunning it uh, alone without the notepad and uh, just doing it off the cuff as I usually do. Hopefully I can keep my thoughts uh, coherent because uh, kind of a complicated topic. Anyway, I'm no longer there, but for the last couple of days I was working at a fitness trade fair. Now uh, I work for a fitness uh, sports nutrition company, and so on occasion there are trade fairs where uh, I have to uh, offer representation. I basically handle all the uh, external affairs, so for example when um, not necessarily customers, but when um, professional people from different companies, primarily uh, English and French, are there, I tend to handle that business and take the notes and do all the business stuff. Anyway, enough about that. Now, on this trade fair, uh, there are vast numbers of exceptionally physically attractive women who are exceptionally scantily clad, meaning literally uh, hot pants where three-fourths of the ass cheeks are hanging out and, and nothing, almost nothing on top except maybe a, you know, a string with something covering the breast vaguely. Uh, and so I was well girded. Uh, I thought uh, well prepared. I did visually on occasion succumb to the sights. Um, that's only normal and natural. But uh, much more important than all of this was uh, the observation I made, which got me thinking, which led me to take notes, which are no longer present before me. And so here I am, winging it again. That being that uh, it seems per perfectly viable and okay for these females to essentially dress more or less naked in an effort to help sell products and sell cars and all this sort these sorts of things. You know, sex sells, right? So you have a lot of young, attractive females who are basically naked running around uh, selling their goods. Uh, selling their goods to certain companies so companies can make greater profits and so on and so forth. Now, I don't want to get into prostitution laws in Germany because it's variable depending on the state within Germany and the state I'm in, it's fairly, um, fairly flexible. But let's talk about the United States and a lot of other countries where prostitution simply isn't legal in the vast majority of cases. It seems to me that uh, this is a kind of prostitution and I don't have a problem with it. Uh, and so the question that needs to be asked is why don't we just have normal prostitution legalized. Well, there are a lot of reasons for that. Uh, and my speculation, and this is all just speculation, is that uh, the reason why prostitution uh, is not legal is once again an issue of control. Women wishing to control the battlefield, as it were. Uh, it's been observed that one of the primary if not the only assets women have to offer are their looks and uh, their uterus and basically their offer of sex. The question is, if prostitution were widely available, to what extent would men partake of it? Now, I have no problems with prostitution whatsoever. It's not something I partake of. It's not my thing. But clearly many, many men do. It's not called the oldest profession for nothing. So, I had this, well, it's a real shame because it's kind of complicated and my notes aren't here, but basically my thought is that uh, prostitution is heavily controlled by the state. Which the state itself is heavily controlled by uh, women. Women certainly would never want prostitution to become freely available. Now, ultimately, this is about the market price uh, of sex. Now, at the moment, we have a kind of state intervention in the market price of sex, or maybe social intervention. In the case of conventional relationships, it's sort of societal intervention. And uh, in the case of marriage, you literally have state intervention in the cost of sex. Remember, the primary reasons why men pursue relations with females, primary, there are secondary ones, is uh, to obtain sex from them. If you need to go through all the mechanisms of either a relationship and then finally uh, scrap heap of marriage, uh, you have a lot of different levels of intervention. Interfering would what probably would be uh, a much cheaper endeavor, or put bluntly, would be uh, essentially the, the base market, the basic market price of sex. 
Now, if prostitution indeed were widely available uh, across the board to men, I would make a couple of predictions. One, I think as, as much as marriage rates are dropping now, they would drop even more quickly. We would see a very rapid decline in marriage. For the simple reason that because we have the state distorting the, the price of sex through intervention, and this intervention would manifest itself in the court system and all in affirmative action, all sorts of all these things come together. But at the end of the day, if we look at the penalties a man very, very likely is to pay uh, in the form of marriage, alimony, divorce court, and all this stuff, that uh, the price of sex is, is very high indeed. The question, once again, is that the market uh, value of sex? Probably not. So if prostitution were freely accessible, many men would partake of it. No doubt, not only would tradition with marriage rates drop, but also the so-called relationship, as we're, uh, as we're uh, urged to call it, uh, would, those rates would drop as well. Because men would have an easily, easily accessible means of uh, obtaining sex. The price would actually literally be determined by the market. You would have competition between women offering lower prices uh, in exchange for their services, their bodies, their offer of sex. Uh, very attractive women might be much more expensive than less attractive women. And so there would be a determining factor in how, what, how these, how, what, in the pricing mechanism um, based on natural inclinations on the part of men and reactions of women. Relationships would turn out to be, uh, well, essentially a waste of time in large measure for the simple reason that um, it, might be it might be possible after uh, a long, after prostitution has been introduced for a long time to uh, obtain sex very, very cheaply and still have reasonable quality with a reasonably attractive woman. Compare that with the uh, distress, the stress, distress, and financial costs of even a normal relationship, whining and dining, putting up with her moods, all of these things, all in an effort to get in her trousers or her under her skirt, the portal as I call it. Mo most men would realize almost subconsciously that it's just not worth it, and so they might uh, opt ra rather than you know spending say in a month thousands of dollars or even hundreds of dollars in, in, a, in a better case scenario on a woman they'd rather just uh, pay maybe 75 or 50 for a quick fuck um, and they get everything they want without going through all the fanfare this would be my prediction marriage would serve no purpose whatsoever beyond procreation I suppose but even then the risks are too high so Prostitution, legalizing prostitution, although I myself would be very unlikely to partake of it, would be um, would be a liberating factor uh, for men and and women, in fact, which I'll get to later. Um, the market would, by dint of men's desires and women's reactions to those desires, uh, determine what, in fact, is uh, a price of sex. Now, it's safe to say that in the current uh, climate, the price of sex is just way too high. If you look at, you know, luminaries, uh, prominent people such as Kobe Bryant, what have you, in some cases, if they're wealthy men, the price of sex is literally millions of dollars. Uh, that hardly seems worth it. In, uh, in the more mundane world of uh, your everyday guy, it could be just thousands or tens of thousands. But if, if you're not wealthy, then that is uh, an exceedingly high amount of money, great amount of money to pay. So it's just not worth it. Um, and it's not just that. Uh, it's not just the financial cost. It's all the other things. The, 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 the whininess, the whinging, the, the moods. The moods are, of course, the worst. The random, uh, unpredictable moods uh, that af affect men's access to the portal. This is a, 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 a great, great problem. None of those things would be present in a straightforward business transaction whereby a prostitute offers her body, uh, her ser sexual services, for a fixed amount of money. Um, prices could be negotiated uh, clearly between the customer and the buyer. And, uh, you know, you would end up with a nice deal on both, for both ends of the, um, both, on both ends of the, the party, uh, both ends of the line. Now, um, of course, the first objection to this, um, I have a lot more to say about this, it would be, well, 
that's just exploitation. And da, 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 da. Well, when we peel back the, the veil of lies, we all know that at the end of the day, that's what relationships are about anyway, at least for men. Men want access to female sexual resources. Uh, we just have to go through, men just have to go through a lot of BS in order to obtain it. That That's really what it is. Um, and it, it's much fairer to the man, and the woman still gets get, gains some uh, direct financial profit from engaging in prostitution. Um, that, uh, that benefit seems much more egalitarian, to my mind, than say, traditional marriage or traditional relationships where really the man, the man is on, not on the receiving end. He, he's just taking it up the ass, metaphorically speaking, um, and not really having that good a time, usually. Um, remember, a man with the power of the purse in regards to prostitution can have essentially have sex whenever he wants as long as the funds are available. Um, you can go shopping. If, if there's true variety in the market, you can go shopping. Maybe you want a high-end prostitute. Maybe you want to have a high, uh, sex with a, a high-quality, very attractive female with specific mm -hmm. with specifications that you know you might have. Maybe you want like large breasts or a certain ass shape or whatever. So you know you could actually go shopping for that, and you could acquire that, um, and you could and you would have to pay for it, of course. But by any exchange of goods. Uh, not so with the relationship. The relationship is just hit or miss. There's simply uh, so. Obviously, prostitution will be extremely liberating for men. What people don't think about, and this was my thought, and I'm trying to summarize all the notes I jotted down the other night as best as I can. I don't think I've been doing that great a job. Is um, that prostitution, in fact, in fact, could be potentially liberating for women? Uh, you might ask, how how could I possibly think that? Well, let's talk about the recent uh, videos coming from both myself and uh, and. Girl writes what about female hypo agency? Um, I think both of our thoughts. Her more, she very directly said that unless women are forced to fend for themselves, they're not going to do it. If the mar if market value is the determiner of what if if sex the price of sex is determined by market value and and buyers and uh, and sellers, um, and you no longer have government social in in inter intervention inflating the price, driving the price up. Uh, many women could, in fact, uh, turn to prostitution, many more, which I see as unproblematic in offering their services. Uh, many women might not, but they would also no longer have their trump card whereby they could, you know, play men for their money and manipulate them in order to get them nice things and buy them nice dinners, and, you know, the whole, all, that's, all that good stuff, or at least good stuff for women. What might result as a consequence with not a, women actually, in fact, being more independent. They would literally be forced to. Maybe they would be forced to develop their intellectual resource. Maybe they would be forced to develop their skills. Maybe, even if it would be artificial and, and induced by circumstance, they would be forced to learn some kindness. I mean, who knows? The other effect of this, if men, in fact, chose to uh, enter in a relationship, the field, playing field would be much, much more level. Number one, on the one hand, men would have ready access to sex. So even though uh, you, that would still be the primary goal to enter the relationship, the, the man's negotiating power at the, at the table of the relationship would be much, much greater because a man, beyond, of course, emotional attachment, could simply just say, you know what, this isn't working for me anymore, and... Um, you know, Marla down the street is offer is has a has a special, and she does X Y Z. Um, women would not be. I mean, women in a relationship would be forced to compete with that, which, in a positive fashion, might very well affect her behavior. Now, this stuff is all very theoretical. I this obviously extremely, extremely, extremely unlikely to come to fruition. But th these are, are some of my thoughts. So you have. Women within relationships uh, making much more of an effort, maybe actually caring about what the man wants, even if it's just because circumstance was forced her to do, which I think at the end of the day might be the best we can hope for. Um, and for men who just simply just don't want to get in relationships, you, like I said, you would have Marla or, or Mary or whatever, and all these women would be offering their goods. Um, clearly, uh, 
prostitution is called the oldest profession for a reason. Um, and there's no reason not to have it uh, freely uh, accessible within, uh, within the market and have the market and customers and buyers uh, and as well as sellers uh, to determine what the prices are. Um, it would and it would be it would be beneficial both in terms of financial profit, but also in term in so, on a society wide basis. So primarily for men, no doubt, and that's my primary interest. Men would benefit the most from it. Uh, they would have uh, untold new freedom um, because uh, you know, if 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 they really needed sex, they could just you know pop around the corner. There would there obviously there would probably be multiple brothels offering different kinds of services, discounts. All kinds of things. The kinds of things that just come into being when you have um, a, a legal product in competition with other products of the same sort, each trying to get an advantage over the other. That's what was going to happen. And then women, as I said, who uh, were really gun, uh, gun-ho about staying in relationships would still be forced, if men, if men so ch- chose to, to, uh, to really adjust their behavior. Because the, the accessibility of what their goods would have a much, much lower value in a relationship in a market where you could just literally, like I said, go around the corner and get something that might even be much, much better for the price, uh, for a much lower price. Um, so this could really have a transformative effect on society at large. Now, I suppose this is a rather radical idea. Um, to me, I, I don't really think much about prostitution. I don't mean that I don't, in the sense that I have no moral... Uh, perception of it one way or another it simply is it's been around forever um, but uh, complete legalization seems to be a very viable solution of course of course women uh, would would never allow this to happen because as all the predictions I'm making would likely come true they know that if if sex were that easily accessible uh, their power their primary power would be lost and women like having the cushy comfy lives they have they wouldn't simply give it up. People in power don't give up their their power. That's why we have state interventions in terms of marriage on the sex in the sex market, and societal intervention uh, intervention and for uh, so-called normal relationships. It's at least clear to me that that's the case. Um, but you see this on even a smaller scale. I mean, uh, you see this with uh, sex tourism and things like that. And of course, sex tourism is is. Uh, uh, demonized, and you hear all these horror stories. I've never partaken of it myself, but I've talked to men who have, and they say it's you know the girls involved are nice and pleasant, and they you know it's not their impression that they're forced into anything. After all, I mean, yeah, there are some in some cases women are literally forced into, but but even more so in a free market, you would have much less of that because um, women, women would, would volunteer and they would compete against each other to offer better services, better prices. Um, and every, every and at the end of the day, all parties would be happy. Women would be making a hefty profit, because even if it would be much cheaper to gain sex, uh, get sex from a man from a prostitute, the number of men visiting a, a particularly um, skillful prostitute might uh, the profit she might make might be immense, and it would be her. It would be it would be hers to keep. Um, so she could also determine the condition. So there's there is an autonomy to that as well. Um, and of course, a lot of women wouldn't, whatever for whatever reason, wouldn't consider a path of prostitution, since uh, a traditional prostitution rather than uh, than the covert prostitution of relationships and marriage. Um, they would be forced to change. They would be forced to fend for themselves, develop skills. Um, now, they might not be happy doing that. In the long run, though, it would be beneficial to both society as a whole and women. Though, uh, they would be forced to. And, and the relationship dynamic would change as well because men would have uh, much, much more uh, power at the negotiating table than they do now. At the moment, you know, if she decides to withdraw the offer of sex in a relationship because of her moods or for whatever reason, then the man is usually just caught, you know, in a trap where he has to beg and, and, and plead and all these kind of silly things. Not necessary. So anyway, this, I think if I had my notes, it would have been better. But uh, these are kind of my thoughts on that, because this watching these these more or less naked women parade their bodies around me, and you realize that why not take it a further step? Well, the reason why why we don't take it a further step is because women won't allow that. They they never would. 
But um, I see a lot of benefits to both men and women if that were to occur. Uh, anyway, these are my thoughts on the oldest profession.